This is the three key digital controller which controls the kiln. It's telling me that so far temperature is about 405, 406 degrees centigrade. And it's, uh, it gets its information from a thermocouple within the kiln itself. So it's a very precise and accurate way to heat treat your blades. Of course the other advantage of using the kiln is that the, uh, the, the blades are all taken up gradually in temperature and there's, there's no sudden shock or sudden uh, heat hitting the blade as you would if you um, put it into a charcoal furnace for example. Um, this just ensures really that the, that the blades are just completely thoroughly heated through and uh, as a result they don't warp. Uh, they should be absolutely flat. But perhaps also for me, the, another big advantage as we approach the winter season here in the UK is I haven't got to uh, be outside doing this in the cold weather when it's windy and rainy or icy. So I'm in my nice warm workshop and uh, yeah, nice and warm. I don't have to rush, I can concentrate on each blade, there's no panic, it's just simply a matter of opening the door remove a blade at a time very carefully and then quench it carefully in oil and uh, the others just sit and wait until it's their turn for, for quenching also. And just uh, preheating the oil this avoids uh, any thermal shock to the blades as they're quenched. It doesn't want to be Oh, it just wants to be warmed up. And that's all I'm doing now, just warming the oil of it. And it's, uh, I use a vegetable oil when I uh, quench my blades. That's it, it's just, it's just warm. Just a bit under blood heat. Well I can see from the digital readout that the kiln has reached uh, nearly at 800 degrees centigrade and at this temperature the, uh, the steel has turned to a type of steel known as austenite or it's austenitic. Also the, carbon the carbon atoms rather are able to move around freely. Um, I could open the door now at that temperature and quench the blades but I like to take them a little hotter. I tend to take them to about 815, 820 centigrade. Because the kiln's gone on a, a very fast uh, ramp, as it's called, it may overshoot by a few degrees, but that's not a problem. I'll allow the kiln to sit at that temperature with the, the blades cooking or rather soaking in the heat, just to make sure they're thoroughly heated through. And then uh, maybe in five or ten minutes I'll remove them one at a time and, uh, and give them their quenching, which will then harden them. Well, they well the kiln is telling me now that it's, uh, it's reached the target temperature and it's uh, stabilised at 822 degrees centigrade. So I'll leave them now for maybe 5-10 minutes as I said earlier and just let the, let the heat soak through to the centre of the blade. That way I know I've, um, I've properly uh, hardened the blade then. Uh, so that's the next step is to open the kiln and quench the blades. Time to uh, remove another willing victim now. See they're cooking in there, held at that nice temperature. No rush, no worries.
and I always do it vertically a gentle up and down stabbing motion and I wait so there's no hurry I can make sure I completely quench that blade and just leave it to sit like that maybe five minutes before I do the next one and once the blades cooled down simply it could still be hot on the top here, heat tends to travel upwards. Take that out, let it dip the oil dry, and put it in my other little metal tin to let the oil drain. And on to the last one. I do them in batches of four. Now it comes the last one. So now I've removed the last uh, knife blank. I let the kiln cool down when it reaches around about 100 degrees centigrade then I reprogram the kiln for the uh, tempering process I do that as soon after hardening as possible once the blades have uh, been hardened the uh, next test I do is to uh, test them against the straight edge I'm wanting to make sure that there's no warping. Uh, the aim here is to get the blades like that. If you can see that the straight edge just doesn't lie, it just tells you that the, the blade hasn't been warped by the heating process and the quenching process. Anything less than that, which is perfect, is not acceptable at Jackal. So that one uh, passes the straightness test. Test each blade. It's another good test to see how, how well hardened your edges are. That's to get a file, which is very hard, and uh, put it on your blade. And see. Just, it's just, just skating. I just took some of the, uh, the carbon off, but it's not done, it's not touched the metal. Whereas if I had a piece of normalised tall steel, yeah, it's good. you can see that it's gone straight into that. Skating off all these, so these are all uh, well hardened. Well, I've left the door of the, uh, the kiln open now, and um, it's cooling down. It's now got down to about 155 degrees centigrade, so that's now uh, cool enough for me to. Um, to put the blades back in again this time 
on the tampering cycle. So they go into a special rack within the kiln which keeps the blades vertical. Then I'll uh, program the kiln to uh, climb up to my uh, pre-selected temperature, which is about 218 degrees centigrade, and then I'll um, be baked at that temperature for a, a set period of time, um, and brought back out, all allowed to cool down again. And once they've, they've reached ambient room temperature, they go in again for a second uh, temper, they get dual tempered that way I can be sure that all the uh, stresses have been relieved and uh, the, the blade should have an even uh, temper. I'm aiming for a rock well of around about 59 to 60 with these knives. What I'm doing here, I'm just uh, selecting my uh, desired uh, temperature 218 degrees centigrade uh, and hold it I want to hold it for I'll give them an hour and, hour and ten minutes an hour and fifteen that should do start that's it and the kiln's running in now and you'll see that figure of 155 Climb back up again and it should hold at around about 218, 220 centigrade. And it will stay at that for an hour. Then I'll uh, remove the uh, knives again, let them cool down and repeat the process. And then it'll be time for bed. <laughs>